So, I'm, like Solomon said, I'm Ted Juba, uh, the <coughs> co-founder of Milo.com, um, acquired by eBay two years ago. Now, um, I work at eBay in the local group uh, on the project called eBay Now, which is a same-day delivery product of anything you want local stores around you to you directly in an hour. Sales pitch over. We'll dive in the technicals. Um, so eBay Now is built on some of the Milo technology for going out to stores and getting inventory information in real time. And we built that long ago in Python, and it's been a Python stack the whole way through. So we've got a lot of experience deploying Python. I mean, this is even like pre-Heroku days when it's you know a lot uglier than it is now. Um, it's still kind of ugly, and that's what we're using Docker to fix at this point. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with, with Python development, but there's a thing called virtual end in Python, which lets you have like a, a virtual environment of all your dependencies. It does dependency resolution automatically. If you want to install like some package, allegedly it will install the dependencies for you. Um, except anybody who's used virtual end, who's installed the LXML package, knows why this is a joke. Um, so this like pip install LXML. LXML is a uh, XML HTML processing library for Python. Uh, it's based in C, so it's really fast. Um, but that also means it has OS level dependencies. So doing this will fail like spectacularly on a stock Ubuntu machine. Um, so you end up with a situation like this. Okay, I'm going to install my OS level dependencies. Now my workstation works on my machine. The end. Right. This is where we used to be. Um, Vagrant gets you a little further where you can have like the standard dev <coughs> VM for all the developers. Um, you do something like this where you install all the OS dependencies and install the Python dependencies and hey, you have this VM that runs. But this only gets you like part of the way there because yes, you install your, your OS dependencies, um, but you're also installing like service dependencies in that Vagrant VM. So you have like Postgres running in the Vagrant VM or Redis or whatever else your like app depends on. The problem with that is like you can't ship that to production. Like that that vagrant artifact that stays in dev, and it always stays in dev. Um, so I mean, on the left you have like a single machine with your application running with all the service dependencies in vagrant. That's all well and good, but in reality, in production, your app is running. Wow, the iPad just brutalized that formatting, didn't it? Anyway, in production, your app is running on who knows how many machines behind a load balancer connecting to databases that are behind load balancers and like other crap that's behind load balancers and the whole thing's just like that. Um, and your app just has to know where to go to connect to all these things. So production is essentially like a sequence of containers of stuff. Like your app is never going to be running on the same machine as your database. I mean, maybe sometimes it is, like very early on. But the point is that production is never going to get less containerized. Right? The more you grow, the more you split things out, the more you containerize it. So there's no excuse that we shouldn't be doing that in dev, which is why we're using Docker now for eBay now in development and testing, soon to be production. I can't say that yet, but it's coming. Um, so in development with eBay now, my app has a Docker file, which knows how to build a container. Um, I also, for dev and testing, containerized Postgres 9.2. That's a public container if you guys want to pull it down and use it, it just like runs, Postgres, done. Um, and I wrote a little wrapper script around the Django manage.py uh, application to spin the, the dev server. Um, this is a common theme I'm seeing. We're all like sort of independently developing this orchestration stuff, uh, like hack together shell scripts on our own. Um, so I guess my one plea to the, the Docker devs is some like orchestration primitives. I mean, not a full blown system, but just easier stuff to help us string these things together and whatever you know, manner we, we need to. But the point is, in your workstation, you can have your app running in, in a container. You can have your database running in a container. You can have Redis or Memcache or all the other service dependencies that your app has all running in their own container on your workstation. So that same container for your app works everywhere as long as it knows how to connect to the various containers. So the point is that containerize the service dependencies and address them as environment variables in the app. Um, and that, like, coming up with all those environment variables, where those are, that's the orchestration piece that we're all kind of independently hacking on, so I can see. The cool part about doing that, and this is what we're doing with eBay now, is that my app container that I build on my workstation, that just, like, slides right into the Jenkins test runner. So I have, of course, 
containerized integration tests, which are like um, total black box testing uh, scripts that run acceptance tests against the web container. And that runs over a Postgres container in Jenkins, um, which gets started afresh and you know populated with all the fixtures and everything before the test runs. The cool part about that is because everything's containerized on the Jenkins box, you can run all these database-driven tests in parallel. Right? And these are integration tests. They're all pretty heavy, so they take a while. So I don't want to like set up the database, run the test, tear it down, set it up, run the test, tear it down. You can run like as many, I mean, as much RAM as your machine has. You can put that many like Postgres servers on your machine, and everything just kind of goes. And there's no like junk left over after the fact that you have to go clean up between test runs or whatever, because you can just trash what was left of the test container and start a new one. Yeah. Or if you're in a test state and your test fails, then you have an environment ready for you to jump into and start testing. Exactly. Right. You can just take a cut of that of the state of the database and bring it down your workstation and monkey with it. So the next logical step to that, obviously, is again, I'm an Emacs user, so <coughs> my workstation, I have Emacs that's like editing files, and those are in the container, and that's connecting to a database container on my workstation. That app container will just slide right into the continuous integration. We have the same sort of like containerized service dependencies, and then once that passes, it just slides right into production. That's where we're going with it. So the idea is not everything in eBay production is containerized. Obviously, this is kind of like the first thing, um, but you can address it all with environment variables. So from the app's perspective, it's just like connecting to a service somewhere. Whether that's containerized or not, doesn't really matter. Ideally, I'd like to see everything containerized in the future, but you know, we're not going to boil the ocean in a day. Um, and the cool part about doing this, I'm sure a lot of you have like jumped to this conclusion already, is that if you want to do the whole like big company, everybody's accountable for something thing, like I can I can generate the app container, I can sign it with my keys, send it to Jenkins, Jenkins can sign it saying like yes, this pass the integration tests and then into production where it can check the signatures or whatever you want. I mean that's probably not relevant in a lot of companies, but in places like eBay, in some areas of our code we have um, like uh, regulations and you know stuff that we have to deal with. So something like that could be useful if this ever starts touching money, which it might in the future, depending on how much of eBay now gets containerized. Um, so once we do that, we'll have taken, gone full circle, or the whole way, works on my machine, works on our machines, and works in production. The same like glob of bytes just goes straight through and works everywhere. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. So, any questions? Lightning time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a question yeah. I have is that she's, um, and I know, kind of, I mean, I work here, and I, I know a little about the private registry and how we work on it, but. My question is, how do you currently do that? How do you move your stuff from like, development to staging and so forth? How do you move it over? How do we containerize it? How or do you move it from one place to the other? With Docker or the way we do it beforehand? The way you do it. How do you do it? Uh, that's a good question. So eBay has, um, I mean, depending on what group you're talking to, the Milo group, us, we have our own slew of scripts that like make Debian packages and install them on VMs and the whole thing's very like heavy and you have to maintain the app repository and that's just like a huge pain in the ass that nobody wants to deal with. So, you know, you end up hiring like people whose job it is to like maintain the build and you know, the app repositories and that, I don't know, it just seems like it's not a very productive use of everybody's time. Um, elsewhere within eBay there are like very custom jobs for packaging up like massive jar files and sending them out into the world. So how are you going to do this with Docker? Are you going to use your own private registry? Are you going to use public registry? Are you going to like move uh, tar files? Uh, the plan is to use a private registry. Um, so eBay has a OpenStack installation that's pretty sizable, um, and there's a lot of resources available on there for us to, I mean, in development, mess around with, and also in, in production, we can get machines very, very easily. So. The idea is we're going to start our own uh, Docker repository, so you can push up the diffs and pull them back down to the machines. Like I said, production is going to be happening sometime in Q4, so that's not fully ironed out yet. Um, but we will get there because it's just so much easier to ship code like this than it is to ship code the other way. Anyway. Thanks. How are you doing it? 
how do you integrate with uh, with Jenkins? Like uh, you tell Jenkins to spin up the Docker and uh, how yeah. you how the in test integration? Uh, so our integration with Jenkins uh, is it's a lot like what we do in Dev. It's all kind of just strewn together with shell scripts. Um, so the integration tests that we run, they are they are few, but they are sizable. So I mean, we can split them into ten or so different jobs. Um, so Jenkins will just you know spin a bunch of Postgres instances, start the the app containers, and then start the the test code containers and run them all through in parallel. It's just custom shell scripts at this point. It would be nice, like a Python script. When you do the integration test, you say, okay, uh, spin up these services. And yeah, then you know, I, I'm not sure what the right answer to this orchestration question is, but I know whatever it is, it has to work exactly the same in dev, test, and production. Um, so I think, you know, from a Docker development standpoint, what would be best is primitives that we can use to make our orchestration solutions smoother. Because um, there's, I don't think there's going to be a single right answer for every environment. When you say orchestration, do you really, are you talking about service discovery? Because orchestration to me is a whole lot more... Yeah, like, well, yeah, I, I guess I'm like conflating the terms, right? I mean, yeah. in, in like, in dev and in test, it's it's more orchestration because, like, hey, I have to spin up this and then, like, then spin up that, but make sure this works and, and so on and so forth. And as you're doing that, you're right. announcing new services to the world, right? So, yeah, I guess a little bit of abusive notation there. When I say orchestration, I just mean, like, all the crap I need to make my app container run. That's in the universe. Questions? No? Well, thanks, and thanks to...